Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Maybe Santa brought you a scan and cut for Christmas. And now you're wondering, where do I start? What do I do with it? Well, I've already done tutorials on how to cut out stamped images. And what I would like to do right now is just teach you about basic shapes that are built into the machine. We're gonna cut out basic shapes such as rectangles, circles. I actually have a little project to share with you in, in doing this. And we're gonna just stamp on them and with those rectangles and shapes, we're going to make a project. So it's going to build. Your skills are going to build, and you're going to just start from the beginning. So the paper I'm using is something that's available now from Stampin' Up. It's called Pattern Party Designer Series Paper. And I thought of using this one, this pool party piece, this rainbow piece. We're going to use the piece back here. And then we're also going to use some basic white cardstock. So to get this paper, it's an actual host paper. You can buy it, but when your order is, when your order's, this is a, a free item that's a pattern party, $18 item, and you get 48 sheets of paper with like lots and lots of designs. So 48 sheets, and like you'll get four sheets of just this paper here I'm showing you. So say your order was $180, for example. That's just an example. And there should be a place back here. It says it here. If your order is over $150, you get 10% rewards. But let's just say your, your, your order was $180, right? You would get... You can just get this for free. This can be your rewards. You can use your $18 rewards to get this paper. So it's a host set, but I put this in my kits a lot because I stock up on it and I put a little sample of it in my kits. So if you get my next couple of kits, or maybe not the one, not the Eden's Garden, I don't think it was in there, but the one that's gonna be coming up with rainbows and sunshine, but let's not digress. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start at the very beginning because I wanna teach you what to do when you get your scan and cut without doing anything fancy. Just all the fun things you can do just by using shapes. So let's do that. And I'm gonna say hi to you guys when I see you in a little bit. So we're going to, and I'll teach you other tips and tricks along the way. So let's just look at the front of the screen. When you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. So that's what you're gonna, and I'm gonna use an SDX125 for this, but every single model, doesn't matter, going back to the very beginning. If you're still a beginner and you have an old model and you just haven't used it, then begin, this is a beginning tutorial. You're going to go into this, you see pattern and scan. We're gonna use the built-in patterns. So many people ask me, why should I get a scan and cut? And the very, the very first thing I would tell you about why you should get a scan and cut is, is this. And if, if, if anybody asks you, you about how great your scan and cut is, this is why it's great. Besides, there's many reasons why it's great. But the very first reason why it's great is, is that you don't, have to, you don't have to do any fancy connection to the internet. Yes, there's my internet connection, but don't worry about that. You can turn on your machine out of the box and cut shapes. Okay, you can use this pattern, build in shapes without doing anything. No connection to the internet. Turn it on, plug it in, and you can do what I'm showing you. That's what I love about it, that you don't have to sit there and try to fiddle with all these settings. You can just start cutting out shapes right away. Hey, well, there you go. I see that Barbara's saying she got one for Christmas. That's why I'm doing this tutorial right now, because I feel like it's time to do a beginner tutorial. When you go into the patterns, which is on the front screen, and you see the first pattern, it's shapes. These are different categories of things that you can cut out right from the machine. This is, I, so I call this one shapes, I call this one icon. This one's called like, I call this one word art. I, I sometimes have my own names for things because it's hard to find documentation. Borders, um, fonts, but there's only a few built-in fonts. And um, some, other, some other fancy shapes, like one of these will be used in your welcome project. Okay, so and it, and it goes and it goes on. There's another category down here. So let's just uh, there's a, a quilting sort of pattern, but we're just going to use the very basic pattern. We're going to go here to the shapes, and we're going to cut out a rectangle. So to cut out a rectangle, you can either start with the rectangle down there, or in this case, since I want to teach you a skill, you're going to just start with a square. And if you were just to change the height and the width of the square, it stays in proportion. So the skill I want to teach you here in this very basic tutorial is that if you ever have a shape that you want to make sure it is not in proportion, like if we don't want a square to scale directly in proportion, the height and width, then you would click this button here. And this means that you can change the width and the height of your square independently. So the, the, the rectangle that we're going to cut is going to be one inch high. Okay, one inch high. Oops, go right there. And you can go up, you can see by very, very small units. If your machine happens to be in metric, you can change it to inches, but we're gonna go, we're gonna go seven inches wide, seven inches wide. 
Okay, so now we have a square that we turned into a rectangle just by changing that button there. So let's do this, let's cut this out. And we'll, uh, we'll actually, we'll add a circle to it because we're, while we have this paper, we'll cut out a, a rectangle and a circle. And then we'll do some more shapes in a different kind of paper. All right, so we have this paper and it is, again, it's Pattern Party Designer Series paper. And I'm gonna just, that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna be cutting out. So let's just, uh, let's just set this on the mat and we'll go ahead and add. Now, you can see it right there. We'll just, I'm just gonna put it over there for now. Put it off to the right side. There's our rectangle. Okay, you might be asking things to yourself like, why just cut one rectangle and you could cut a whole bunch? We can cut a whole bunch. So like, depending on how long this takes, we can address that too. But this is very beginner. We're just cutting one for now. So we're gonna add another shape to this. We're gonna add a circle. So we're gonna click on add and go to pattern again, and you're gonna add, go to here, go to the shapes again, and we're gonna click the circle. Go down a little bit, it's right here. Oop. Where is the circle? How far do I have to go down to find this? There it is, it's way down. It's like three screens down. So there's a circle, and we're gonna, now we want this to be in proportion because, right, it's a circle. So we want it to be in proportion. So we're gonna make it two inches. Let's go two inches. So let me just make sure because I done some, maybe it might be 1.75. Let me just, I just got to test it real quick because sometimes my projects take a lot of experimentation and I got to see what I came up with. All right. I'm just testing it on this little sticky note to see how big I made it earlier. All right. Was it, was it two inches? Yes. Looks like it was two inches. Good. So we're going to go down to two inches. And there it's in proportion because it's a circle. So we're gonna set that on the mat. Now you don't wanna put this on top of this because if you do, you'll get a notch. That's if you wanna get a notch, that's one way to get a notch, but you wanna make sure they're not on top of each other so they don't cut onto each other. So leave them a little bit separate. I'm gonna go ahead and load the, load the mat, load the paper. I'll show you, I've actually here, since it's beginner, let's load it, let's load, let's do everything. Put this down. This is a piece of the pattern party paper. We're gonna put that on the mat. Your mat's gonna be very sticky at the beginning. So don't push too hard on this or your paper will rip. In fact, it's best to do the welcome project first because it gets some fibers on your mat and then your mat's not as sticky and you, and you don't get a lot of a, you know, not a lot of scraping about. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening, but you don't have to do this with a new blade. Mine's kind of getting dull and I ordered the wrong kind or it is what it is. And I don't have a replacement yet because mail is slow. Santa's delivery is slow. I just use foil and some say aluminum doesn't sharpen steel, but for me, it makes me feel better. That's a little piece of aluminum foil, sharpening a steel blade. But hey, it makes me at least clean my adhesive off my blade. Let's put it that way. It might not actually technically sharpen it, but it works for me. I'm going to load the mat, and I'll show you what button I used. There goes the mat. It's loading in, and there's the button I used to load the mat. Okay. When it's done loading, I can go ahead and cut. So now we're going to go to OK, and we're going to select Cut. We're going to see that we select cut. We can cut, draw, emboss, foil. To do these features here, you need special kits, special tools. So right out of the box, you can do these. You can cut and you can draw. You can't emboss and foil right out of the box without some extra things that you need for that. Okay, so we're going to click on start. Well, I mean, let's say you could, but you shouldn't. You, you, need, you need special tools. You need like an embossing tool kit, starter kit. Well, that's what I have, but... There's also some other things, you know, some other patterns you can get. But I'm talking about what you could do right now, right out of the box. No special software needed. So what is the machine doing? It's cutting. I didn't have to connect to this internet. I didn't have to do anything. It's cutting my shapes. It's fantastic. So that's the one thing I really, really love if somebody asks me. It's like, why, how does this differ from, you know, a Cricut or something like that? Or why not something else? Well, yes, in the old days of Cricuts, you could just cut, you, you, you could have opened them up and used cartridges and cut them out of the box. In the new days of crickets, you have to be connected to the internet to do a lot of things. And it drives me kind of crazy. So I do have those too, but I love their design library and I love those machines, but just not, it's just not practical for me. I like doing things right out of the box. All right, so there we go. There's our two shapes we need. See, and you see how I got them off the mat. I just used my little spatula and got them off the mat. So two, two down, many to go. So it's double-sided. We're gonna use this pattern on for this. We'll use this pattern. Let's keep going and let's keep cutting some more shapes. So let's, 
we're going to get rid of those. We're going to go back to the beginning. Because I'm using a different paper, I actually don't have to go back to the very beginning. I can actually edit and I could delete these off the screen if I want. I could actually just trash them. Or I could go back to that and then I would have a blank screen. Or when you, when you trash everything off your screen, you are back to the beginning screen. So I'm going back to the beginning and I just want to cut another rectangle. And the reason I didn't cut it along with this is because I'm using a different pattern. And that's why I'm going, I'm going to use this piece, this piece now. It's still pattern party, but I'm using a different piece of pattern party. So we get our little rectangle. We're going to turn it in, our, our square. We're going to turn it into a rectangle. And this time we're going to go to, let's, let's do the, to make it easy for you, let's just do the width. We're going to do the width first. Okay, 2.25. 2.25. You hear that beeping noise? You can turn that off if it annoys you. I like the beeping noise to know that I'm doing something. And we're going to make the height 3.25. Okay, I just think it's easier to do the width first. Okay, sometimes. All right, so we're now we're going to click on, we're going to put that piece on the mat. We're going to load the mat. Actually, I already had the mat loaded. I didn't need to reload the mat because it was already loaded, but we'll load it again. In other words, you can keep, you can, you could have just kept the mat loaded the whole time. You didn't need to take it off. All right, so there we go, and we're going to. Um, I just want to make sure I get the glare off the screen. There it is. I'm going to cut a rectangle, three point two five by two point two five. But let's put it over there. And you might be wondering, why don't you cut it over there? It tends to always get caught up in the corner, and then I end up having to use the lever. And for some reason, my mat just isn't as sticky over there, and the paper gets caught up in the corner. So for for my machine. For me personally, I like to cut things over on the right side because they just the mat sticks better. So I'm going to cut that rectangle. Same thing as before. Just keep clicking OK until you get to cut. And I'm just going to go ahead and start that. And we're going to cut that rectangle. So sometimes if you're too close to the corner, things get caught up. So you can move your shapes around the mat to help you Keep from keep them from getting caught up under the under the mat and stuff. Okay, so it did a good job with that rectangle. So now we have another part of our project that we need. So let me show you now how to remove that the right way, as opposed to how quick I did it before. We're gonna get under there with the spatula, or you can bend the mat like this. See that? It's very easy to get stuff off these mats because they're not very sticky. Except at the beginning when you're gonna be like, paper chef, they're too sticky. What should I do? Well, I always recommend doing the, the first project. Do your welcome project because the paper they gave you doesn't have a lot of fibers on it. It'll help condition your mat. So the reason I saved this next piece till now is because it's better to also use some designer series paper by stamping up. We don't have a lot of fibers in our paper. Use these kinds of things to help condition your mat before you try to start using something like the basic weight cardstock, which I'm about to show you. Because basic weight, it has a lot of fibers in it. Meaning this could get stuck on your mat if you start out using this instead of using other kinds of paper. You'll get fibers and you'll be like scraping, but it's no big deal. If your mat gets all stuck, don't worry about it. I'm just putting a piece of basic weight on here. Don't worry about it. You just wash it in the sink with some Dawn dishwashing detergent and some warm water. And it'll be sticky again. Let it dry. It'll be sticky again. No big deal. All right, so now let's do some more shapes. And then... We're going to put this whole project together. So we're going to go back, add, no, we can either add or edit. So let's just, um, let's do an edit so you get to learn something new. So let's edit that rectangle. I could have just added one, but I'm going to go ahead and edit it. Okay, so I could have added a new rectangle, but I'm going to edit the rectangle to make it the size I want it. So we're going to go to edit, and we're going to go to object edit, and we're going to resize. So... This is what we have now, and we need a little tiny basic white rectangle to stamp on. So let's make it one inch high. Okay, see where, see where I'm going with this? It's just a little one to stamp on, and two, oh no, one and a half inch wide. Whenever you're stamping, though, it's good to make two of that because you can make a mistake and you can flip it over but you don't want to have to go back. So let's make two of those. Click OK. And we'll go ahead and click OK. 
I'll have the measurements for this project eventually in my description of my video. Just not right now. All right, object edit. We're going to go to this plus and we're going to make two of these. Because you might be doing a different project than me. I'm teaching you basic skills. You apply it to whatever project you're making. Don't cut them on top of each other like this or you'll end up with three little shapes. You need to move them away from each other so you end up with two shapes. Overlapping shapes is, might be part of your goal at some point, but right now we're not overlapping these shapes. Okay, I'm just putting the rectangle there. All right, so let's see if I need basic white for anything else. Yes, we need the circle. We need a circle. So we got the little rectangles, and now we're going to go ahead and add. Let's click OK. We're, gonna, we're going to, um, let's see, click OK, and we're going to go to add. Okay, you want to add. We want to add circles to this basic white paper, and we're going to go, because basic white's for stamping. That's what I'm using it for, stamping up basic white paper. These here are for layering. These are for layering my project. The others are for stamping. So we need to get circle. Now let's recall, okay, because this all relates together. There's a method to my madness, as I always say. Recall that this was, when we made this a little while ago, it was two inches wide and I double checked it. That's because I'm layering that and I want to make a little circle for the stamped otter. There's gonna, we're going to be using um, amazing otters, a stamp set. And for the little otter, I need since that was two, I'm going to make this 1.75. In other words, a quarter inch is good for layering. Something a quarter inch bigger, a quarter inch smaller is good for layering. So because that was a two inch circle, and it depends on your stamped image, right? So whatever you're stamping is the size of the circle you want to make. Let's go ahead and make two of those, right? We don't have to edit it that way. We can just put two of there right now. Put two on the mat. So now in case we mess up the otter. So let's put it over here though, because that's my papers on this side of the mat. And Put those there. All right, so now we have two circles to stamp onto and two rectangles to stamp onto. And you're going to get to see me stamp and color with the stamp and blends and put this project together next. Select cut. And we're going to click start. And we're going to make two, not only because I like to make two, I like to make more than one so that we save time. But in case we mess up, we always like to have extra shapes for stamping. Typically, I'd make a whole page of shapes, and we might get into that in a little bit. But it just depends on how long it takes me to color, because I really want to finish the whole project with you from start to finish, so that you can go off and make things right away with your new scan and cut, with whatever stamped images you have, and with whatever, with whatever boxes, with whatever projects you have, or uh, materials, I should say. All right, it did a good job. It, it determined, now this is an auto blade. So let's talk about this in case you have a different model. So before we move away from the machine, this. This here, you click OK, and OK, I'll show you. I clicked OK, and I'm going to unload the mat just for a moment. So this has no numbers on it, no numbers. It's an auto blade. It determines. It goes ee, ee. That's what all these scratches are on the mat. It's determining the depth of the mat compared to the depth of the paper, and it determines it's an auto blade. But if you're using a CM model, you want to use a blade depth of three, like a CM model where you have to set your own blade depth. When you cut in designer series paper, use a blade depth of three. When you're cutting basic white cardstock like this, this is the basic white, not the thick basic white, the regular basic white cardstock. When you're doing something like that, you're going to use a blade depth of, let's see, of four, okay? And then for thicker cardstock by stamping up a blade depth of five. So that way you you can get started with your other machine. So if you say, oh, there's a hair on there. If you say, oh, Paper Chef, I don't have the same model as you, you could still follow along with whatever model you have. All right, so now let's do some stamping, and I'm done with the machine. I'm going to move it out of the way. I've done lots of tutorials on vinyl. One thing I recommend, a good, a good beginner tutorial, is when, uh, personalize your scan and cut with vinyl. That's a good, per, a good uh, tutorial. I have this done several times with different models of machine, both using a USB stick, both using the cable, wireless transfer, um, using things that are right on the machine versus using vinyl or using patterns built into the software. Okay, so there's lots of tutorials on using vinyl. That's another good beginner project. All right, I'm just gonna use this paper I already have set up. All right, so we can stamp onto it. Why well, waste a good mat? So let's do this first. We're gonna do the otters. When you're stamping, it's good to have a silicon mat. Okay, silicon mat. Now, I'm gonna put this down. There's a little stampin', stampin' up logo on it. And we'll go ahead and stamp both of those rectangles. Now, this is a die. This was done with a die, and you can't, you can't really get this effect too much with um, 
a scan and cut, but you can just cut out your rectangles that you need. So that's why I just, but you can sort of do stitching by making the blade skip a little bit, but this is not an embossing machine. This is not a die cutting machine. You can't put metal dies in here. It has a blade and that's how it cuts. So I just wanted to make that clear. You, you have to do things like cut your basic shapes. So let's go, you are utterly awesome. This is a new free stamp set, January 4th, totally free. You can't buy it, can't buy it. You can only get it for free. How cool is that? You can only get it for free, meaning you earn it. When you spend $50, you get this stamp set for free at my Stampin' Up! store. I'm a U.S. Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but it might be a different amount than $50, but $50 U.S. dollars gets you this for free. You put it in your cart and it'll say, if you spend $50, it's gonna say, you have a level one reward. And level one reward, it says pick out something. This is a level one reward. There's lots of other things you can get for free for $50. This is just one of them. I'm gonna lay the stamp down. I never really cleaned it that much as you can tell. And I'm gonna lay it down and stick it to a stampy block. Before you stick it on your, on your nice little rectangle you cut, always stamp onto the paper, onto your mat, to make sure you get a good stamped image, okay? Which I do, and make sure your stamp's not wonky. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use the better side. There's, there's two sides. I'm just going to use the better side. Okay, you could have layered up this rectangle too, but there wasn't a whole lot of room on my project. You are utterly awesome. That's what I want. Notice the ink absorption on this paper versus the mat. It came out really thick this time, but my, when I first did it earlier, it wasn't quite as thick. If you don't want it as thick, that's what you have the other side for but that's why I cut a few of these out. But I'm thinking they're cute like that. They're nice, oop, that one's not as dark. See what I mean? That's why I said you make extra rectangles. I like it though. I like it like that, but we're, we'll just see it, test it. Yeah, I like it better dark. All right, we're gonna leave it like that. Now we're done with the sentiment. Keep, keep using Memento Black ink. That's a good ink. And we're gonna do our otter in our circle. So the otter we're gonna choose, we're gonna, we're gonna color. And I'm gonna, as I'm, I'm gonna say hi to you guys before I color. Like I said, I didn't really clean my stamped image that well. I'll show you some other things I've done with the otter later. Put him up there. We're gonna put him on the stamping block. It really don't matter if the, only the head's on the stamping block because I'm not using the whole, the whole image. Okay, I put him on the stamping block. These are great stamping blocks, by the way, because our, and I, and I don't just mean that because. Like I'm a demonstrator, but they are good because they have the little, they're thick and they got ridges and they don't give you wonky stamped images. I really like our stamping blocks. And we're going to put our circles over here and we're going to stamp the otter. Now you want to make sure you get the fish in there. It don't matter if you center it or not, but make sure you get that fish. So go like this. The rest of the otter doesn't matter as long as the little fish is in there. <laughs> That's why, I mean, if you're wondering which otter to use, I think he just, I think the fish is so cute, you need to put the fish in there. So that's what we're doing with the otter. If you don't get a good stamped image, turn it over and do it again, but I think that's good. All right, now we say hello and we're gonna use our Stampin' Blends. Stampin' Blends are our alcohol markers. When you use Memento ink, the alcohol doesn't run, which is very nice. And I found my, since last time when I did this tutorial on cutting stamped images, I found my light crumb cake. Stampin' Blends come in pairs. They're available now in all our colors. Well, I don't say all our colors. Never say all because never, never say all. Not all the colors are available. Let me tilt my camera a little bit so you get a better view like this. Hi, Jess. Hi, Barbara. Yes, I hope you had a Merry Christmas as well. Hi, Lorna and Donna. And I'm, yes, Barbara did have a Merry Christmas because she got an SDX 330 for Christmas. Awesome. And Kristen, hello. And Sandy, too. Santa Self got her one. Awesome. I kind of pick out my own presents, too, because, like, my husband wouldn't know what to get me. So, but he did get me something. Like, and I'm still going to be setting it up. Okay, so let's see. Marcy, she got it for her retirement. Marcy. So lots of you are working with your with your new scanning cuts. That's awesome. Anna got, had a lovely, hope, had a lovely Christmas. Yes, Nola too. Hello, Nola. And the same with the SDX. And um, you don't need a cutter level, Sandy. SDXs have auto blade. But if you ever use the cutter level, it's the same for all the machines. Like when I say, when I say blade three, blade depth of three. All right, so Stampin' Up! markers have 
I'll continue to say hi in a few moments, but I'm going to just start coloring. Snapping Up markers have a dark and a light. We're not using ivory yet. Ivory is just in case we need it. The, the, we're using crumb cake. See how there's a light crumb cake and a dark crumb cake? And then there's a thin side and there's a thick side. We're going to go ahead and use the thick side. We're going to start out with the dark one, thick side. Okay, dark and thick. The thick side is like a brush, and we're just going to do that. Color in the whole little feet, see, the little paws or whatever. We're going to say paws. And because this is a big image, you can use the thick side. Go ahead and go like that. And then I'm just going to kind of do the little, his little arms holding the fish. Mr. Otter. Whenever I see a new cute celebration stamp set like that's whimsical, I always have to get it. Like they had meerkats a couple years ago. I still have them. Um, I use the heck out of those. So we have usually every celebration, there's just something that's like too cute to resist. But after you get your like one of these, you only need one because it's a stamp set. Then you can stock up on paper. Other great celebration items are Sunshine and Rainbows Designer Series Paper, Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series Paper, Simply Marbleicious Designer Series Paper. So what I did is I did a little dark outline around the, make sure I'm in focus. I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna zoom in now. Little dark outline with the cr dark crumb cake. And now I'm gonna take the light, the light one, circular motions, kind of blending the two, and I'm gonna go back over it. You put the light in the middle. And you could have just done dark on the outside, light on the outside, but I just found that this one looked better. And then I'm just gonna do circle over the top of everything, circular motions here. Sort of circular. Okay, over. Leave his nose, don't color his nose or the fish yet. We'll do the fish last, but we do things in assembly lines, but you wanna make sure you get this while it's wet. Blend it while it's wet, go over it again. If you don't blend while it's wet and it starts to dry as you get harsh, harsh lines. Okay, very easy peasy. Okay, so now we're gonna do the Dark, and the, the ivory was just to fill in. Sometimes I use ivory for the belly. Dark. We'll do, we'll do the thick side and then we'll do the thin side and the inside. I'll show you how that will look. Because I want to show you the, the thin side of this marker. It takes longer to color with the thin side. But you can go like this and you can sort of see how it's just easier and you get more control over the thin side. I'm still using dark. Still using dark blends. But see, when I've done this, I'm just going to be done. Like, you know, I'm going to have two, two projects. I'm going to make two projects instead of one. And depending on how long the tutorial goes, I could talk about making multiples of the same image, but I might do that in another one because that's a, that is a, a tutorial about, there's something called autofill, and I love like auto layout and autofill, and you can fill the page with the same shapes, which is nice. All right, light crumb cake. Okay, circular motions, blending in the dark and light. Looks funny now, but when I show you the one that's dry, it doesn't look so funny. Light crumb cake for his belly. Her belly. Could be a girl otter. It would have been cute to have a baby otter on the, on the mommy's tummy, because when I was in Alaska, many years ago, it was in the 90s. Like, honestly, like, besides the whales, like, I think... I think it was even more impactful to see the otters. They were rafting. They get together on their backs and they raft. And the babies were hanging onto the mommies. It was the coolest thing, onto the mommies' bellies. In a raft where they were laying on their back. And then they took turns going down and hunting. And they had, I think they were, you know, getting some kind of shellfish or something. And they were, they were hunting and putting it on their back. But I just remember the babies attached to the mommies. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so cute. So... Also, I was impacted by the whales. So I'm now I'm using Petal Pink for the little noses. We're going to use Pool Party too. But I'm going to have to use markers because it was hard to color the fish with blends. Now, you, you could color the fish with blends. But I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo. And it's, not, it's kind of dark, but I'm going, to, I'm going to blend it a little bit. You usually don't mix like water-based markers like this with your other kinds of markers. I mean with your alcohol markers. But... In this case, I just couldn't get my fish dark enough. I'm going to use So Saffron for the top of the fish. 
and then I'm going to sort of blend the two. I'm just sort of blending this again, and then I'll go over it all with a little bit of a alcohol. Uh, you can't really blend markers, markers. They dry too quick. But what I'm saying is blend, meaning just get the So Saffron blend and sort of kind of go over the whole thing to make sure there's no white spots. This is a dark So Saffron. I was making the fish kind of like a little pink salmon. I was going for that. And I've done blue fish, which are cute, and green fish, and they were cute. But in this case, my, my water is going to be pool party color, so I didn't want to make the fish the same color as the water. So now, the one blend I always tell everybody to have, well, besides, I'd say if you're going to get two sets of blends, it would be crumb cake and pool party. Pool party is the one I use the most because I use it for water, I use it for snow, I use pool party, a set of pool party blends. So it was easier just to use the dark one, and then I didn't really have to blend it that much. But... um. Let's try, let's try coloring one with the dark and on the outside and one with the light. Let's do that. I'm going to just use the brush side and just go ahead and show you the difference so you can kind of see that they're not that much different. But I tried it both ways. I tried blending the two colors and I didn't really need to. It was just ended up being better to make sort of solid water with a couple little streaks of the other color. Let's try coloring one with dark. See? This one just happens to be a juicier marker. So the nice thing with coloring with a lighter color on the background is then you can then take, so you can then take the dark one and fill in your little spots like this, like that, and maybe maybe a little bit around the edges, right? I don't really think I need to though. I think I like the I think I like the light one better. I'm just gonna go over it a little bit like that. That's my opinion. Light one looks better, but somewhere in between. Color the water. All right, I'm going to zoom back out now, and I, I think I skipped one little spot of crumb cake. And, then, and also do the eyes while you're here. Light crumb cake. I didn't use the ivory at all. Basically used um, the pool party and crumb cake is all you really need, plus whatever colors. If you don't have a lot of blends, just start using your markers. I mean, you might have more markers. And if you don't have markers, use colored pencils. I mean, use whatever you have to color your stamped images. My friend Marty, she's always... Martina, she's always using colored pencils for her stamped images. And I, I don't mean like, well, I do mean kind of regular colored pencils, but watercolor pencils are another option. We'll do something with them in the future. Anyway, there you go. There's our things. And now we're going to take our layer, which came out cuter. I'm liking the light one better. I'm going to make him, he's going to be the one I layer on here. We're going to use them later. You're going to take your Stampin' Dimensionals. And you're just going to put them on the back. And yes, it does bleed through when you do, when you have uh, blends on the regular basic white cardstock. The thick doesn't bleed through, but it doesn't really matter if it bleeds through, right? Okay, there's our layer. Put a couple on this part. You are already awesome. Put two on there. Now we need, for the, for the next piece, we need a piece of not a piece, but some rolling adhesive. All right, so you're probably wondering, what is she making? All right. Oh, look, I got to say hi to a few of you guys. Hi, Tina. I'm glad you were able to check me out. Okay, Barbara's saying all she's done is the welcome project that came with her machine. That's what you're supposed to start with. Hi, Sheila. Awesome. That's what you're supposed to start with. Hi, Donna Jo. And does the marker dry out if you don't use them often? No, they don't. it's not about using them often. It's like... They dry out if you don't put the caps on right, or if you um, if you don't use them up, they dry out. Like because over time they would dry out because it's alcohol. You can refresh them, but I haven't had good luck with that. Some people will say, like I I don't know, don't even go there. I'd say it's easier just to get new ones if they dry out. But use them often. I mean, why wouldn't you use them often? Don't get them unless you're going to use them often. All right, what I'm showing you now is this. Hello, Lavita. Hello from Texas. There. All right, is anyone, know? yeah, the fill, it's autofill. Oh, um, Donna Jo, so there is a fill in the, in, I just covered that in my last class. We use that option. All right, what I'm doing now is what's called, I'm using this new box. This is in our new mini catalog. 
January 4th, sweet little boxes. That's what we're making. That's what we did all this for. I like to give you an element of mystery. Look, what is she doing? Now, I actually closed mine on the bottom, but you can. this time I guess we'll close it on the top. I only closed the last one on the bottom. I made that the bottom only because I accidentally mounted everything upside down, but it really doesn't matter. So you, to set up this box, you're going to go like this. You're going to take off one, just one side. Well, just like get, score it. I mean, it's already scored for you. What I mean is fold all the edges and only peel off one side. That was my mistake. I peeled off both sides and then my box got wonky. It's really strong adhesive on there. The adhesive's already on there. I didn't put it on there. So we're going to go like that. And we're going to close the box, but only peel off one side. Don't peel off the side yet. Very important. Now you're going to seal the box. I shut the bottom, or the bottom's already shut. I'm just going to get it so it's not wonky, because I've done this a few times and my boxes came out wonky. Now that I know not to seal it until I'm ready, they came out better. Okay, there you go. Seal it. Now the other one, you're all ready. See that? No wonkiness. Peel this off. And, I mean, I should have used my take your pick tool. It's a little pokey tool to get that off. And I'm going to go under there and I'm going to push. And now I have a perfect little box. These are so easy to put together. They come in one piece and they're very strong cardboard. So now I'm going to make that the top and I'll make that the, uh, here, let's make that the front. Let's make the front like the top. Right? You can just open up the candy like that. So that'll be the front and the top. So let's put that there and we're going to put this little piece on first. Okay, so this little piece of pool party we cut out earlier, that's our rectangle. And that rectangle was 3.25 by 2.25. Okay, so we will write down, because I don't know when I get to the point of doing the blog post. I'm still working on my Giving Gifts Workshop blogs. But let's just say 3.25 times 2.25. I'm not even bothering writing length and width and all that stuff. You understand that one is the height and one is the width, and it really doesn't matter. We did, um, that, was, that was DSP, and then we also had a DSP circle, DSP, which was two inches, and then we also had a DSP one inch by one point, no, this one, that was the 3.25. Yeah, this one. Let me put that on there while I'm talking to you. We also had a big long rectangle that we're about to use for our belly band. Put that on there. It was doop, 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 DSP belly band and it was one inch by one inch by seven inches. Okay, and then we had, that was all DSP, okay? Now we have basic white cardstock and in the basic white cardstock we had one circle. So we're gonna say cardstock for, and the one circle was 1.75 inches and the other little rectangle was one inch by one and a half okay there you go there's your measurements take a screenshot all right where are we going now we're going to put the belly band so the belly band to put the belly band on you're going to take it and you're going to kind of just wiggle it a little bit like you don't have to actually do any score lines or just wiggle it around wiggle it around your box till you get to there just wiggle it and when you get it, then just open it back up. Hold your one finger there and put your little bit of adhesive there. You want a little bit more adhesive than covers the flap because it'll help stick it to, like if you don't get enough adhesive done here, you want it to kind of stick to the box a little bit so it doesn't slip. So maybe put a little bit of extra adhesive way down there so that the band doesn't slip right off. Okay, see how it doesn't slip off now? Because I got the adhesive more than just right here. I put a little bit over there. Now the band doesn't slip off. So that's your belly band. Unless you want it to slip off. It's all, it's all good. Put that there. Put this one there. But this is the way I did it. I did it, like I already did dimensionals on the inside. I put like this one there. Okay. I put it up a little bit. And then I put this one sort of, co I covered that part. I covered this little bit like that. But before I did that, I did some little inking. I forgot to ink. So to ink, I already put the adhesive on the back. So I was using a uh, crumb cake blends so that it wasn't so stuck and I was going to open up the crumb cake and show you that so tap 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 or tap 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 on here and then put it on your blending brush and then tap it onto your mat or tap it onto there like in other words don't don't get your blending brush and tap it right on there tap it on your mat first so you get a little bit of ink around the edges see that 
Otherwise, you get this big blob of ink. Okay, tap, tap, tap onto my stamping block. That's how you blend the edges. Or that's how you put a little bit of ink around the edges. And of course, I waited a little bit. Don't do it while you're just right. Don't do it the second you get done stamping, because if you do, you're going to get a big blob of ink smearing across. There you go. I'm going to do that. You are utterly awesome. And you could use pool party to ink around the edges as well. Here's where you get all the products I just showed you. It's the pattern party paper is available now. All these blends are available now. Basic white cardstock, stamping blocks, memento black ink, crumb cake ink, all that stuff. But not the awesome otters or amazing, whatever, awesome otters. Because they're not available until celebration, January 4th. And you get these for free. You can't buy this. You can only earn it for free during celebration, which ends February 28th. So it goes January 4th to February 28th. All right, so my box I made earlier as the sample, because I always try to make myself a sample to get all the measurements right. I do all the experimentation for you. I want to show you a couple of related projects, or pro yeah, products, projects. And I want to show you what fits in here, because I always get asked, what do you put in these little boxes? Well, you can put anything you want in the little boxes. M&Ms, make them jingle. This is actually part of a Valentine's suite, but I'm going to use the little boxes for a lot more than Valentine's Day. So you can fit two Ghirardelli, full Ghirardelli chocolate squares in there, in your little box. Or like I said, M&Ms, mints, lifesavers, I mean, whatever you want, a, a gift card probably. Sure, a gift card would fit in there. Okay, and see how it opens on the bottom. It doesn't matter that it opens on the bottom because I only put candy in there. And this new one I opened on the top. Okay, so a related project is I do have like a celebration card club and anybody in the U.S. can join in. I'll be doing the videos on YouTube. And in my celebration card club, I'm going to be showing you how to make a very similar project, right? But I emboss, I emboss the background of this mini treat box. This is a Valentine's one. And this is a new free stamp set. You have my love and support. This is new paper from the mini catalog called Sweet Talk Designer Series Paper. I use the heart punches. I use some new ribbon. And I used a new embossing folder. I used a lot of products. I'm going to be showing you how to make this project start to finish in Card Club. And then another related project to what I'm showing you right now is something we're making in Card Club. When I say Card Club, we're not meeting like at certain times. I'm coming on YouTube and doing the tutorials. I'm not like, that means that you just get the, you get the kit is what that means. Card Club means you're going to get the pieces. I'm not allowed to send you stamped images. I'm going to be sending you the pieces to make the card. That's what I mean by Card Club. And, and, it, and only the card club members are going to get the full-on, very detailed PDF tutorial, but the rest of you will get still. What did I put in the inside? Nothing on the inside. So here's just stamping it onto a rectangle with some inking. And we're going to make that. And this one is one I made in a YouTube, movie, a YouTube video recently. And it's a birthday card I'll be giving away soon. This is uh, how to stamp into an oval shape. And I showed you how to cut out stamped images on YouTube, so be sure to check that out. Because... I've been cutting out a lot of stamped images with the otters. And let me give you a little, show you what that tutorial was about. See, cut out stamped images. That's some crafty goodness. And then if you missed, this is all related. There was another tutorial where I showed Friends of the Forest, the new stamp set. I showed how to cut out these stamped images. And that's what these are over here because I'm using the mat again. So there's lots of new products and lots of new ways to use your scan and cut with the products that you already have. All right, so some things you can do with your scan and cut are, this is um, something we did in the video, and just to kind of give you an idea so you can go back and watch, is like you can, this is called an offset. So I did a quarter inch circle and I just did it by making one shape bigger than the other. But if you go back and watch this video on how to cut out stamped images, which I just did very recently, you're gonna see how to make an offset. So here's a shape and the offset is bigger than that shape by a certain percentage and it, and it makes like another layer. So that's another way of doing a layer. Also, what you're going to learn is that you can make outline distances around your stamped images and, and just get like a really fun white border, like, like a metal die would give you. All right. Scan and cut is a great machine. She has a CM350 that she's had for two years. And I also love that too. And I have a CM3, I have a couple of CM350s. Uh, no, I have one CM350 and a CM300. SCX 125 and 125E, and I do love them too. So dark crumb cake with smoky slate belly, okay? What color did you use? Uh, Tessie's saying, Tessie's saying she used a smoky slate belly, and you can use smoky slate bellies too, or you can do the whole thing in smoky slate. I used crumb cake. B 
because I have like three or four sets of these because I keep using them up and I have a lot of these and I was trying to just use different, use up some of my crumb cakes because I keep ordering more. I do have Smoky Slate as well. I might try an otter in Smoky Slate. So you can make birthday cards with your otters by putting the little hats on them that you cut out. So that's always fun. And just give people these. It doesn't have to be birthday. But if you want to turn this into a birthday present, all you got to do is take your little party hat, put your party hat on this little gift I made, and now you have a birthday present with the gift card inside. So there's lots of options for that stamp set. I think it's going to be timeless, and it's super cute, and I'm going to love it. And here's my little blue fish. You can see I made some blue fish, and then today I was going for like sort of the, the little pink salmon, but you can do little pool party fish, different kinds of hats. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you can get started now and don't and feel confident to just take out your machine and start making these projects and customize them the way you want them and then make multiples. Make multiples of things so that you can get a lot of things done, get a lot of projects done and have a lot of fun with your new your new Christmas toy. Thank you all for watching. This is the Paper Chef and have a very happy new year.